comic with kids. What is going on, my friend? Uh, it's uh, it's great to be here, man. Uh, clearly, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel here for uh, for guests. I mean, it... <laughs> well, I mean, we're equal opportunity here, John. You've got to give everybody at the top and the bottom equal chance to be on Teen Question. So, you know, I dove down to the bottom of the barrel and I found you. I know. Bad luck all around. But I'm excited to be here and to be included, man. That's really nice of you to, to bring me on. Oh, no, I'm excited to have you on, brother. Like I said, it's it's one of those, you feel like every guest, especially when you know these people, you know, like I know you, right? And, yeah. and which was funny because when I send out the request to be on 10 questions, I literally copy and paste it. I can tell. And, I can totally tell. <laughs> and John messaged me back and said, dude, you know me. I was like, I know. I, I just, I try to be professional. You know, I've got this basic post I send out. And I was like, but, you know, but what I was going to say was it's, it felt like I wanted to have you on forever. Right. And, but I'm trying to do this show and I'm talking to some of these huge channels and I'm doing this thing. And then you finally, like Dale was on last week and right. I've been wanting to talk to Dale forever. Like Dale and I have known each other since the very beginning, since I started this, uh, same thing with your channel. I've known whom you were for two years. Um, <laughs> and, and just for whatever reason, didn't get to have you on, but I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm happy to be here, man. Yeah, no, I, I'm excited. So, John, first question, as always, is what got you into comic books? You know, I, I, uh, I'm i from a family of educators. Uh, my, my my dad, you know, all the way back, we had an ancestor who was like a, a one-room school teacher in Colorado somewhere. Where she had like high school down to kindergarten in one church uh, every day. Oh, wow. and, um, and I think it's just so that environment created a love of reading. And it was everywhere in my household and growing up. And and then when I got kid had kids, it was the same kind of thing. It was like reading was always something that was happening. You know, whether it's a newspaper you're reading or whether it's a magazine that you're reading or novels or comics. So as a kid, it was just everywhere. And then when it when it became like, hey, you know, these guys are cool. Look at this guy with the claws like fighting this other guy. And then you know, look at this guy with the cape flying around like it just became another media to consume and i was yeah. into all of it so um my brothers were were into it as well my older brother way into spider-man and so he might have like encouraged it a little bit but i was way more into the comics and then we would visit my grandmother uh at her place and she out and she was in uh, pine top arizona it looks like uh you know what you'd imagine a ski resort looking like it's just like beautiful you know, pine trees everywhere and snow on the ground. And you could walk from her place to the Circle K and they had a spinner rack and they had the comics on it. So my mom would give us a little bit of money every day and we could take a long walk down there. My brothers and I grab a comic each and bring them back. And I wanted to go three, four times a day and just buy everything. It was like, once I was in, I was way in. No, I love, man, I love that. So really for you, it's as much about the reading aspect of it as because that's what I think you and I have really in common because I am more of a reader. I enjoy the art. Like as my collect, as I have got back into collecting and the way I collect changes, I've gotten really into the art, but it is sure. always primarily about the story for me. Um, I think, and having I think it kind of has to be even, even, even people I know that are into like collecting grails and all this kind of thing. It has to come from a place of, I like these characters and the experience of living in their world for a little bit and that comes from story right that has to come from a place of story yeah so you're saying like when you your parents read are you an educator as well do you care yeah to yeah i've been teaching i taught third grade for almost 13 years i'm an administrator now at a school but well my wife teaches as well like you know she's uh she's an educator and um and that's something that's really big in our house as well is reading mm -hmm. and you know but i always like to read and it wasn't really something that was like pushed on me as right. far as to read but i don't know like i mean i've said on here a thousand times used to hang out with my uncle at the flea market well there's not a ton to do other than talk <laughs> and you know as, as a kid these right. adults don't want to talk to you but you know mm -hmm. i would help him you know sell and all that but i used to sit there and read all the time and uh and it just kind of developed into like i read way more than comic books i read you know fiction nonfiction, you know biographies whatever um, I like to just read. Are you very similar to that? Totally. And and again, I think I uh, I honor my parents by mentioning that. You know, I think they were always reading. New, they you know, both of my parents have always had 
two different newspapers come into their house constantly and they devour them. Although my dad now reads primarily on the iPad, his news, all, you know, his uh, newspapers come to his iPad. Um, but then my dad, he always, he's almost always read three books at a time. He's got one by his bedside. He's got one that he takes with him out in the living room and he's got one on his iPad. He, and it's usually a nonfiction. Usually it's a, uh, you know, some kind of a history he's reading, right? And then it's uh, usually there's something that's totally science fiction-y that he's out, out the window with. And then usually he's got a drama and he's always reading. And so then it just bled into me. So now I don't read as broadly as my dad does because his, his, his reading, he just reads everything. Um, yeah, I struggle with nonfiction. I, I've only got a few authors I love, like John Krakauer, that I can really get into their stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But most of what I loved as a kid was fantasy books, and I still read a fair amount of that. I love a good detective, like, you know, story. So I read a lot of, like, procedural kind of stuff. Uh, and then, uh, and then of course, comics. I just devour a lot of comics. I do, too. Like, I probably read three, four comic books a day, every day. Um, it's kind of my, cause I read so many, I have to read, you know, every single day or I can never get through all of them. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> I mean, I really, I mean, it's, you know, and then I keep a book, um, in the living room for me to mm -hmm. read, uh, at all times. Uh, and then I have one in my car, um, where, cause I drive a lot. So okay. when I'm on the road, um, I sometimes if I'm having to wait in between deals or, you know, whatever, if I need to burn a little time, I read. Okay. <clears throat> Sometimes I read comics. I bring an iPad with me, but um, I usually have a book with me. And I like to read. <coughs> excuse me. I like to read like um, motivation books, you know, self help books, things like sure. that. That I that I try to uh, impart my you know wisdom that I gain on my staff. So uh, yeah, I, I love to hear that though because a lot of people are into it for different reasons. It's they love the characters, but I just I love the stories. And I feel like collecting has like those three facets of like, I, I want to own the book. I want to read the book. I want to be able to sell the book someday. Right. And it's, so we all fought, we all have that, like three, those three pieces, but it's more about like what percentage of each of those, you know, are defining you. And I've always felt like the reading part was the biggest piece in all of that for me. I didn't want to spend time selling books if I didn't have to. And I don't necessarily want to collect everything. Although my wife would argue, it seems like I am collecting everything. Uh, <laughs> But like for me, it's the reading is is what it's all about. And I, and I, to your point, I have two or three short boxes at all times, full of books I need to read, full of trades and things I need to read. Usually, a lot of I buy independent books in trades a ton. I got a stack of them right over here, and it's just like you know I need something new. I'm gonna pull out one of those and read through it. And then if I if I don't love it, I can give it away. If I if I absolutely obsessed with it, I might get the singles later on. Uh, but like I've always, and I try, and when I travel, like you're saying, when I go on a vacation, I take a short box with me. <laughs> yeah, I'll do the same thing. They I pack mean, into a car box. so well, you just like slide it in with all the luggage and you got all you're reading. Well, let's make this question too. And I find it interesting because I think a lot of people are, I know I have, I've changed the way that I read. In the way that I consume, and you even mentioned it with your dad, like his mm -hmm. newspapers now, he no longer gets the paper. He actually reads it on an iPad. He still and, gets the paper, but he uses it as like recycling material. He, put, he puts it really? in the yeah. material. Like he's like, he wants to, he wants to support good journalism, but he's like, he's like, I don't need the paper pay part, but it's like they include it for another like two dollars a month. He's like, I just feel like I should support good journalism, and then I don't know what to do with the paper. <laughs> No, that's that's hilarious. So he still gets the actual paper, but he reads he it online. I love he that does. so much. Yeah. Well, I mean, but no, but that could be compared to a lot of comic book readers and even myself at some point because or in some way, because a lot of times I'll buy the singles and then read it digitally. Yeah. Um, and that was my question was as far as the, the way you consume comic books, like I have found myself and it is legit 100 percent what you said. My wife was like, look you're running out of space here. So like, it's, it's a matter of space and totally being able to, so a lot of times I will read a book digitally first right. and then go and buy the floppy. If I, if I love it. Right. Is and that for you? Is it that way? So I, uh, a, a year or two ago, no, two years ago, I started subscribing to Marvel unlimited, which I think mm -hmm. is by the way, just a phenomenal app. And if people have never tried it out. I think my girls love using it when they read us, you know, if they, if they find a dollar bid book and they want to know what the next issue 
of the story arc is, I'm not going to go hunt that one book. I'm just going to give them the app. They're going to search it and find it. It's it's a wonderful app. Um, but it it did allow me to sort of try out digital comic reading. This year, I made the big push in January to cut my pull list back to where I'm only getting maybe four books a week. And the rest I'm reading digitally. And it's because of, like you're saying, it's this problem. I, right. <laughs> I got I got a ton of short boxes right there, and that's not even like all of it. That's like almost two thirds of my collection, but I still have a ton more, and I just can't store it. I just can't, and I don't want to be the guy. And in no shame to the people that are, but I don't. I don't want to be the guy that has to like have a an auction every weekend, and and spend my time selling these books because I can't store them. And I, so it's like I don't want to do that. It's a waste of my time. It's too tiring. No, I mean, but I agree with that, right? I mean, because that is something I have found, again, as I talked about kind of moving through this adventure, you know, my my midlife crisis collecting uh, adventure, um, as far as like, you know, I was literally, literally buying everything I could get my hands on at first, right. everything. I mean, I'd cover B, C through Z. I was yep. buying every title. I was buying every tie-in. I was buying everything. Well, then you figure out, well, hell, what am I going to do with all this? You know, I mean, I got to store all this because uh, yep. I'm not a hoarder by any means. You know, it's I like to collect things, but I collect specific things and, right. you know, they have their place and it's very organized and it's neat and, and all those things. And it kind of got out of control. Like I'm sitting here where I'm looking. There are boxes stacked all around here. And in my attic, I've set up a place where I've got boxes stored now. So I've had to go back. But my problem is, John, is that I'm still kind of old school. And I like the feel of the paper in my hand. Of course, that's natural. Absolutely. All of us do. If we had a choice, we would all read these in floppy copies. Absolutely. Yeah. And so that's the problem. Like I am halfway into the digital age and I'm halfway back into <laughs> the old school way. And, and I just love having, like I still, the local newspaper, I still buy it and, and read it. You know, like I buy the paper, but that's the only one I do. Everything sure. else I read online. Yeah. And I, and I have grown as I've gotten in, you know, doing the, the YouTube thing, I've made a lot of connections with friends who are into indie comics and it's expanded my appreciation of indie comics and indie writers and artists. Um, and I've found in those categories specifically, I want to read it as a trade. Yeah. I want to have all the issues in one collected volume. So for me, like that has made it so that I'm like less inclined to buy the individual issues of, of, of an indie book or series. I, I might try issue one just to see like, hey, if it becomes valuable later on, I've got it, but I can test drive it. And if I'd like it later, I'll buy the trade. If not, I can just keep moving on. No, I think that's that's very much how I do it. Like pretty much every number one book, I'll read the synopsis. And if I like the synopsis, I buy it. Sure. And I usually buy three of them. Um, it's kind of how I do it. Um, and then I store those back for future investment. That's, you know, I consider that an investment strategy. Uh, sure. It's worked some, some it doesn't, but I, I only buy the ones that I think like synopsis wise that I would enjoy that I can potentially see as a TV show. But then the trades is something that I haven't necessarily, a lot of times what I'll do instead of buying the trade, I'll just wait till they all come out and then go get it digitally and read it like that. Read it all. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And read it all at one time because I want to read the full story. And I think you're right with the indie books that sometimes it's the best way to do it is to read just, like if it's a five, six issue series, just right. wait till they come out and read it as a whole. Well, and, and, and I do a few shows on my channel where I give away trades. So it's kind of like. I don't mind buying them because they go in a little box and it's like, if I want to give two or three away to somebody, it's like, here, enjoy these trades. I, I throw trades in on boxes constantly where it's like, here, just take a couple of trades. But I love that though. As a guy who likes to read, you're trying to encourage other, Hey, here's something to read. <laughs> right? Know? No, I dig that though. No, and I think that's cool. So, all right, let's go to question three and talk about YouTube. I mean, you know, all of us are on YouTube for a reason or got here for a reason. Like, Tell me your origin story with YouTube. What brought you here? I mean, I suppose like a lot of us, you could blame uh, the big three, right? Reggie, Bueller, and Tom. Like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like those three guys kicked off in in February a few years back, and then I was just I was just back into collecting, so I was into all the stuff they were doing. And then uh, the summer came around when I have vacation time, and I'm like, you know what? Let's try this, and. Uh, Bueller and I had been talking a ton. He is incredibly approachable. I mean, all three of those guys have been very friendly and super approachable. But Bueller's the only one that, like, early on gave me his phone number. He's like, yeah, here, give me a call when you need me. Like, whatever. And 
So the like the first video that was comic related on my channel was a contest entry because Bueller had done a contest on his channel and was like, hey, show me a comic that you love, but also what was your music that you listened to in high school? And I was like, I love that he did something totally non-comic related, that that was where he went. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to enter this contest. I totally lost, but it was fun to like enter the contest. And then the, you know, the ball was rolling and I, I decided to, you know, it would be fun to show my girls some of the books that I love. So I, I did a Batman year one review with my daughter, Kate, and we, you know, we edited her thoughts together and put it up. And it was this little, like, now we were progressing into what was my channel and it's John's comics with kids. Cause my girls were always going to be part of this. I can't like separate it. I, you know, there, there's, they're too much a part of what I do every day for me to like shove them in a corner and then do my YouTube and then come back later. So then it was like, okay, well, what can we do together? And I was really emulating Bueller, John, John's comics with kids, Bueller and Bueller <laughs> comics with Bueller. I was then doing Saturday morning comics with my girls where we would sit on the couch and just talk about what we're reading. And Bueller had his comics with coffee on Monday mornings where he's mm -hmm. drinking his coffee and talking about what books he's reading. It's like, he was inspiring a lot of what I was doing and super helpful in like tech stuff giving me guidance on, oh, no, no, you want to use this, try this, try that. Uh, his whole family background was in TV production. So he was telling me about lighting and stuff. And I had been to film school, so I kind of understood some of what he was saying. Um, yeah, just and absolutely that. Was, he was a huge linchpin in kind of getting me where I was going on this. Oh, Bueller, you know, I interviewed him pretty early on, you know, in 10 Questions. And he's one of the coolest people I've ever talked to. I'm serious. Like, as far as what you just said was so spot on because he was just cool. And I thought, you know, all right, this dude's got 20,000 subs. He's probably going to be, a, you know, he's probably not going to talk to me. And they came on and couldn't have been more different. The guy right. is the, the living incarnation of the dude from the Big Lebowski. Like, he's just the coolest cat on the planet. And he's been very, super friendly to me ever since. Like, you know, just very nice guy. And he's got a, he's got a great sense of humor. So yeah. I can poke fun. I've poked fun at him on my channel several times. He's poked fun at me on his channel several times. And like He's also just been a huge supporter. The only reason I got to a thousand subscribers because he kept shouting me out and he kept promoting me and giving me the chance to kind of become something else. And uh, and I can't wait if Bueller, if you watch this, I can't wait for that Bueller bus to get down here to Orange County, California, because that's when we're gonna hang out, man. And coffee's on me. Coffee's on me. Oh, look! If he's watching this, come to Kentucky. Like <laughs> I want him to come to Kentucky so bad. <laughs> And uh, and I'll think we have a local uh, coffee guy here locally has his own coffee company uh, called Shuffle Bean. Uh, it's made in Costa Rica, and uh, we'll we'll go enjoy some Shuffle Bean coffee and talk some comic books. So Bueller, love it. Come see, well, come pick me up, and then we'll drive back out to Orange County and there see you John, go. and we'll there all hang go. out. That, that would be it. fun. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's you know I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the aspect of it. You know, it's obviously John's comics with kids, like you said, and you have your daughters, and I have two daughters. Um, and but my daughters were older. Like the reason I started the channel was to prove to them that it could be done. That an old man, <laughs> like literally anybody, could do it. Because um, they See, even dad can do it, right? Right. Well, I mean, it, legit. I've told the story a thousand times, but I mean, it's they said something about wanting to do a YouTube channel. I said, "We'll do it." You know, I can help you figure out the technical part of it. And my oldest daughter ran the TV network for middle school, so she knew how to do it essentially. Right. And they're like, no, 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 we can't do that. That would be embarrassing. I was like, look, you, it can be done. All you have to do is try. You know, it may not work. Who cares? But at least you gave it a shot. And I said, I'll right. show you. And then so I started a YouTube channel and started talking about comic books. And, you know, a thousand subs later, here I am. You know, like now they think it's reasonably cool. But I just as far as your daughters are concerned, I've never been able to get either one of mine really interested in the reading of the comics. Now, both of them read. Sure. Um, they read Twilight and they've read Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and, yep. you know, and all those kind of books. My youngest I've come the closest with as far as get her to read some comic books. Was it an easy thing for you as far as your daughters in the comic book aspect? Like I know I watched one of the Saturday morning shows and it wasn't even like I can't remember the title that one of your girls was reading. I think it was the youngest one was reading. Um, Something she hadn't got too far into it when you guys were talking about it, but like, what was that like as far as introducing them to the to that medium, and did they take right to it? I think I think like anything, 
uh, novels, TV shows, movie. It, it, you just got to find the the niche that they are in, where they are at. And um, for my girls, at different phases, they've they've had books or series that they were fascinated with that just spoke to them. So my youngest is an Archie head. Like it's all Archie. She found Archie and his gang done. Like that anything with those characters she was in. It, even Riverdale, which I think is not really appropriate for her at this yeah, point. It's a little adult. Yeah, I watched it too with my daughter and was like, oh, okay, we need to try something different. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my Archie. Hashtag not my Archie. Uh, right. Uh, so, like, you know, they have their thing. You know, my oldest, when she got older, she, you know, she she did the Twilight thing. Uh, she's now into Stephen King. Like, I'm like, okay, wow, we're, we're really getting to that age. Um, but when they were little, it was, you know, meeting them where they're at. And if they saw... Uh, an Avengers movie and they wanted to read something in those in that vein, I was like, here, try this run or try that run. But they both went their own way for sure and would start with whatever that whatever they were interested in. And it was usually female superheroes. It had yeah. to have that. It couldn't just be like a bunch of dudes. They were just over that really quickly. The so 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 I just as long as I I give them a little bit of money and let them play. And you know, I, I always had the books lying around so they could try out whatever they wanted i'm a huge x-men fan they have never been fans they've never been like super into it they'll watch the movies um and they've read a few things i've got the omnibus floating around so they can pick up that and read it but it's always been like that's dad's thing that's not my thing right. they wanted they wanted to identify with wherever they were in and so for charlie she loves silver age mm -hmm books and she loves Archie uh, Kate she loves more dramas like she's gonna want something that's got a, a stronger centerpiece story so she gets a lot of the like um, uh, Raina Telgemeier I don't know if you've heard of her but she uh, she does graphic novels and she's huge through the scholastic books fair kind of thing and so they she she's easily the best selling graphic novelist period like she sells more than anybody more than spider-man more than Batman more than any of this stuff and, and my oldest has read everything she's published and just absolutely devoured them. So the, that's where she started into her comic journey. Cool. Well, that's interesting because I've tried to introduce specifically, you know, the female characters. I've tried Spider-Gwen. I've tried right. Supergirl, Catwoman. Um, uh, like the X-Men, I tried like with Storm and mm -hmm. Emma Frost and some of them. I've tried. None of it really took for them, my youngest is a collector at heart. She's like me and is a collector, but she likes vinyl. Um, mm -hmm. Like for whatever nice. she likes old music. Yeah, but she likes vinyl. Um, and so that's something that we share because um, cool. I love music too. And we'll go to, you know, antique stores, flea markets, things like that. Try to find old vinyl. I mean, you can spend $5 cool. and have a day, right? I mean, it's yeah, right. cool. And uh, especially around here. So but yeah, that was, I've always wondered that with you because your girls really seem to be into it. But I like what you said there that you kind of meet them where they are. You know, here's some money, go see what you like. And then we'll yeah, expand my, on that. When my shop does like dollar bin sales, because my in California, we don't have many dollar bins. I don't know how other people find quarter bins and dollar bins, but but my shop will do like dollar bin sales and they'll put out just tables of books, just mountains of books. And, you know, and my, I'll give them ten bucks and be like, hey, "Go, go ham, go find something that you're into." And invariably, they'll they'll flip through a few things and pull out female superheroes or Archie books or whatever that they're into. And then they they have their own little short boxes that they're packing full of their characters that they're collecting and holding on to. They don't collect them for monetary value; they just want to hold on to them for the stories and stuff. Yeah. No. Cool. So I want to ask you this real quick, like. We're it's 10 a.m. This is a Saturday morning when John and I are together. Um, it's normally when I record these. It's 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. What time is it where you're at right now? So it's 724. Uh, we usually go live for our morning. It's on the couch at 830. So about about an hour. And usually uh -huh. my girls are sound asleep when I kick off, but one of them just came through a little bit ago. Kate's, <laughs> Kate's on her phone. She's she's cruising through. She was expecting me to be like on the couch watching TV and she's yeah, like <laughs> so she, she came out looking to watch a movie and then she's like wait you're doing a show this morning like, yeah. yeah so there you are okay, well, but yeah it's usually on. just me i'm a super early riser i will be wide awake at 5 a.m and ready to get the day going but the ladies in my house don't usually wait till after eight uh so usually i get the house to myself and i can read a few books 
I can prep a few like shows. I can make some thumbnails and things like that uh, when I got my my time in the morning. <laughs> I love it, man. Cool. All right, so let's go to question four. And this is a question I've been asking of late. Just and it's more like a lot of times ten questions is a lot of the things that I'm experiencing, and you know, and I want to ask other people. It's like therapy, right? Sure. For me, um, is like what's been the most challenging aspect of YouTube for you? Like from, from the start to now, has there been different challenges um, or has it been pretty easy for you all along? I think there's always challenges and there's always technology things and, and such, but I think the biggest hurdle is always time management. I mean, it's yes. just it, when you have a full-time job and you have a family you want to spend time with, this becomes like, third in line all those responsibilities go first and then it's like where do you fit this in so that's been the biggest hurdle and there's been times when i've been on it and managed it really well and it just sort of youtube fit in perfectly and then this last this last week i was really way too full i mean i was doing shows every almost every night i had three shows on tuesday night it was way too much it was way too much and i think uh, I, I wax and wane on, am I managing my time? Well, am I doing too much? Am I not doing enough? Um, and so, yeah, it's, for me, it's always been, how do I balance these things, right? The, the fun of, of collecting and, and having this kind con- these shop conversations with friends with the, you know, I don't want to say real life because this is definitely real, but the, the everyday life things that, that are just as important. No, and that's the biggest issue for me is time management. Like right now, I'm getting ready to run for a political office in my hometown. And oh, wow. yeah, so it's um, something I've been interested in for a long time. Like I am the chairman of our water board here, the water district, and we have a very troubled water district. Um, we did when I started and that was four years ago. And it's it was all over the news. Like I've been on CNN, I've been on um BBC. I mean, I've been in the Wall Street Journal. Like I have been all over because when I started, it was, we were having, like, this is a little true story. Like I started, they asked me to be on it and I told them absolutely not because I knew (laughs) what an issue it was. And then they said, look, think about it. And I was legit looking at my girls one day and I thought, man, you know, I don't want them to grow up and, and us still have this problem here. And them say, dad, you know, you could have helped. You, you know how to do this stuff. You could have helped. Why didn't you? Right. So I decided to take it on and there's no pay. It is literally um, a volunteer <laughs> and it's Ooh. been the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And it's probably the most rewarding in some sense because of how what we've done has helped the community so much. Um, but it's pushed me over into wanting to consider politics. Right. So I'm, I'm running for a magistrate position. That's like a city commissioner or county commissioner and other places. Good for you. Thank you. And um, and so I have to work on that right now and so i'm having to cut my content back like i'm legit going to go to two days a week i generally do four days a week i'm going to do first appearances and key issues and i'm going to do 10 questions because this is my favorite thing in the world to do i love this so much um and that for me has been the big time management uh is the grind of it and like you said dude i got two girls that i like spending time with um they're very involved um, and I kind of like my wife too. She's pretty cool too. So <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I don't know. I got, I got a good gig going on over here, you know, it's, well, uh, and I'm impressed with people like Reggie's a great example of somebody who's got two kids that are still really young. He's got a full-time job. He's got a, he's got a, a wife that is awesome and supportive. And he's also got, you know, almost five days, six days a week of YouTube content he's creating. I, that is a grind that I couldn't possibly keep up with. I'm very impressed with people that can manage those things as successfully as he. Plus, he's like ripped and working out all yeah, the time. Man. I don't know how he manages all these things. Like he is, he's a beast on a no, different level. No, he is level. a beast. You're right. I, Reggie is I, a beast. Shout out to these people that can do those kinds of things because for me, it's just doing what I'm doing seems to take all the time. <laughs> Well, that for me, that was the thing like, you know, I was able to put out content four days a week. I operate my business. You know, my kids are involved in everything, um, you know, sports and, you know, all these different things that they do. And so Amy and yeah, I are out yeah. every night somewhere. I don't generally get home till nine, ten o'clock at night. And, and the sports thing, to your point, like I've got, you know, my youngest, Charlie's 
you know, she's in two soccer teams right now. I used to do refing for her league. So I was like on Saturdays, it was like, nope, sorry, we're, we're going straight from our couch to, to games and I'm refing all day. And it was like, it was, it's a lot. It's a lot. Well, and that's when I added the political thing to the table. It was like, okay, <laughs> something's got to move. Right. And, and it was YouTube. And so, sure. but I enjoy this so much. Like I really do enjoy it. Like it's a labor of love. Right. Um, and, and I really dig it, but it's mainly because of the relationships. It's, it's probably more absolutely. So yeah. yeah. So, all right, let's go to question five. And I wanted to talk about your channel itself and the evolution that it's gone through, like kind of compare and contrast, like where your channel started to where it is today. <laughs> I think, um, Bueller's always told me I need more edited content, regular edited content. And I've always joked with him that it's just like, it's just not in me. Like I don't have the routine of, of like being able to shoot and then edit something and then get it produced and ready. And so my channel's always relied on two kind of things. It's been the Saturday show with my girls and then a show that I do with my friend, White Whale Comics, Alec, where we talk about the indie books that are currently on the shelf. So new comic book day book club. And I've been doing both of those shows for almost four years and they've never really stopped. They've evolved and, you know, the style and format has evolved. Alec and I used to do it as a weekly show, uh, get a book on Wednesday, read it, and then review it Wednesday night with a community member. It was it was a grueling grind. Um, now it's a monthly, let's look back at all the books from the month that we've read. Uh, because we're also doing, you know, Dungeons and Dragons together and all these other things together. Um, but mostly it's always centered around, you know, how to do reading activities. And I've tried, and at one point I was actually, you know, Bueller was excited to see me producing. I was doing a weekly edited video and I did it for almost eight or so months. And I was like, I can't do this forever, but I'm going to do it as long as I can and kind of prove that I could do it um, to myself more than anything. Uh, but towards the end, it was just like, you know what? It's a ton of work. It's not getting as many views as other stuff that I'm doing on my channel. So why not make this the focus as should always be for me? Is this fun and is it sustainable? Um, so I, I tend to lean heavily onto live streams mm -hmm. and I, you know, and it, I can do the same, have the same discussion, but save myself the, uh, the challenge of having to then sit at the computer and click and edit it for a few hours, uh, instead for that 15 minute video or whatever it is. Um, so in the end, my channel evolved away from the edited content and is really heavily based in the live streams. See, and that's really interesting that you say that because um, my content is all recorded and because I can't do a live, like I don't know where I'm going to be from one minute to the next <laughs> right. to be able to do a live video. So I have to do recorded, I'll record it and then, um, show up and you know edit it when i can and then i you know i have a pretty set schedule on when i put stuff out um but yeah no I, that's interesting that that's you know that's how it works for you is really the lives what works for you yeah i mean it, uh, on my channel uh, i i have the weekly show i do with no good comics talking about x-men and 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 we oscillate that between our two channels and it just works better as a live stream for us where we don't have to then splice it all together. It's just a long conversation and we can bring community members on and, and, and share a slides show of what, what the book had inside of it and just really deep dive one issue at a time. Um, and then comic gories is it requires a live stream. So that that's one where we need a chat because they're the ones voting on the game, right? We're, 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 celebrating community members showing off their books and allowing the chat to to decide the winner so that we're just kind of uh the vehicle for the whole thing am i frozen on your side by chance i uh, yeah i didn't i didn't know if that was me frozen or you frozen no i am frozen that's what let me try something real quick hang on can you still hear me i can still hear you i don't know what's happening Mm -hmm. Let me try this just real quick. Nasty. I'm not used to sitting here at 7:30. And I didn't realize I was getting some nasty glare on me. Ooh, that is a that's a hot hot light. I don't know that I can do anything about that. All right, that is the other camera. Let's see. 
Okay, it's hopefully going away. I don't know. I can tell. Oh, I can pivot. Let me pivot. Oh. Right. We'll know, we'll know we it's go. the second half of the show because I'll pivot away a little bit. And get, yeah. That's that's a harsh bright light. I did not realize I was going to get that white light. I get that about one o'clock. If I'm at one o'clock, it comes through this window over here to my right. So. The Batman there. Let's see there. There's Batman. There, there you go. go. All right. Good deal. <laughs> All right. You ready to jump back in it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here we go. All right. All right. So let's go on to question six. And, I, and you have kind of mentioned a few of the things that you do on your channel. And, and just for the people who are watching that may, you know, not know what type of content oh, you sure. do, kind of go through the different shows that you do each week and, and kind of what those are about. Uh, so as far as what's on my channel, I do a uh, every other week I do comic gories on my channel. It's a it's a game show with community members, and they're they're having thirty seconds to dive in their collection and find a specific kind of comic book cover, and then the chat is voting on who had the best uh, best cover for that category. Uh, so it's it's a show that I used to do with the boy who had seven, Matt, and he's he's been working through his church the last couple of years and just really taking a lot of his time. So he has been un unable to continue hosting the show. So uh, I moved from, you know, uh, second banana to first banana and then, and then, then brought in my buddy JP budget collecting to help me run the show. And then I'm on his channel once a week doing dungeons and dragons. Uh, so it's, you know, we're, we're trading back and forth between the two of us. I do every Tuesday the Omni X-Men with my friend Justin, No Good Comics, and we're yep. talking about an individual issue from the Claremont X-Men run. We're almost done with our second Omni. It's take you know it's about a year for us to go through an Omni issue by issue, highlighting you know what happens in the issue, why the issue is worth money or not worth anything, uh, what we feel about the art and story, and then talk to community members about it too because we tend to get a ton of fun people in there for that. And then my monthly show I do with my friend Whitewell Comics, where we look at mostly indie books from the month that we had read and, and how we felt about the month and what books were worth the time or not worth the time. Uh, and then Saturdays with my girls on the couch. And then other shows I do are pretty much catch as catch can. Um, I do a show called Drinks and Movies with my buddy, uh, Bearded Comic Bro. We were just on last night. Yeah, so I was on last night. All the Batman books behind me here because he wanted to run through with a couple of our friends. Uh, the Batman and then how it fits in our rankings of our favorite Bat films. So uh, so when we can make the time for that, that used to be a weekly show, but we just can't keep it up anymore. So it kind of is like when an idea strikes, we just jump in and do it. So the Batman, I haven't watched it yet. I have not been able to go watch it yet. So talk to me a little bit about the Batman. Was it was it good? I, I thought it was great and worthy of being put up there with book, movies like The Dark Knight and the original Batman and those those what we would consider to be iconic portrayals of mm -hmm. this character. Uh, I, I went with a bunch of community members here in uh, Orange County, California. The, uh, the team nerd herd crew rented a theater, a screening at a theater, and basically just offered tickets, 10 bucks a ticket, who wants to come and watch? It was an amazing experience. My wife came, my girls came. Uh, they've seen all the Bat movies except George Clooney. <laughs> they haven't seen that one. <laughs> and uh, they came out. The my daughters came out saying it was their favorite Bat movie. They were like, "This is it. This is the best one." And I definitely am willing to put it in the conversation. I would need to see it again, but I think it's absolutely worthy of inclusion. And if you want, I think the thing, the takeaway most people had from it was. It's a slower and longer movie because they wanted to do it as a detective story. They wanted it to feel like Batman actually has to find clues, interrogate, discover answers, go on to the next thing. It's not just let me punch a bunch of guys, which he does punch a bunch of guys, but like it's definitely more of a, a mystery to solve. It's more of a detective story, which is what Batman really is. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, right? He's the world's greatest detective. So, all right, so do this for me because for me, it's uh, you know probably Michael Keaton, uh, the original Batman, Christian Bale, The Dark Knight, um, and then where where does this one rank with those two in your you opinion? Mean, you mean as far as the actor playing the part? Yes, it's tricky because I feel like a lot of times actors get uh, labeled based not on their ability to act but on the cruddy screenplay that they get saddled with, right? Like I love Pierce Brosnan. 
And I think he looks more like James Bond than any actor who's ever played James Bond. But he got easily the worst screenplays of any actor yeah. who's played James Bond. So his movies yeah. are the worst. But he would rank high as far as Bonds for me because he is just – he's freaking Pierce Brosnan. You put him in a tuxedo right. and he is James Bond. He is James Bond, 100%. Right? But you look at those movies and you're like, God, these movies are horrible. <laughs> Nobody would want to watch these again. Um, and so I do think some actors – like I'm a big fan of Val Kilmer as Batman and Bruce. I think he did a really good job. But I think he, you know, he's stuck in the Schumacher era. And he was, he was the, you can tell he's the smartest guy who's played the role because he looked at the Batman and Robin script and was like, bye guys. Yeah, I'm going to saddle George Clooney with that. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, well, Kilmer was a great Batman. He really think, was. He was a great think, Bruce Wayne. And I think he balanced Bruce and Batman better than I think most other actors have. I think some of them would be better at one or the other, but the balance is really tricky. And I know that Pattinson gets labeled with, uh he's a bad bruce wayne and it's true but that that's the point of the movie is this is not a batman origin story it's a bruce wayne origin story and the whole point of the movie is him realizing i can't just be batman and ignore my family's money the business you know the image of you know the billionaire playboy i can't ignore all of that i can't just act like this is because the city needs bruce as much as it needs batman and i think the whole point of the movie is he's realizing i'm a horrible bruce wayne like I'm a I'm an atrocious Bruce Wayne, and it's funny to see people critique the movie about that because for me that's the whole point of the movie is him coming to that realization. Alfred says it, Catwoman says it, Riddler says they're all telling him uh, Bruce Wayne owes this city more, and he's not living up to his uh, opportunity. I guess his opportunities. Yeah. Uh, so for me, I I would put him pretty high, but I want to see it again and I want to see him more. Uh, my favorite uh, performance as Batman, it's not, I mean, it's, I, I like Christian Bale a lot because he got the best scripts of anybody. He really did. Yeah, those were you the know? best movies. And, and so and in that way, it's almost an unfair advantage. He's starting the race ahead of the other guys. Plus, he finally got to move his head, right? He's the right. first Batman to be able to turn his head side to side. Poor, poor, every, everybody else looked like they were like yeah. broken right. neck and they had to turn their whole body. Yeah. So you look at the fight scenes in the Keaton era and you're like, it's ridiculous. He can barely move his arms. He can't move his arms above his head. So he's kind of like doing this and he's like dancing around. So, I mean, I, I rank Val Kilmer pretty high. I rank Christian Bale pretty high and I'd probably put pads. So for me, Michael Keaton is, he's not my favorite Batman though. He, that is my favorite Gotham. Mm -hmm. That's how Gotham should look for me. That Tim Burton captured the best Gotham, but Keaton never, I think had the chance. I think it was always about, Catwoman and Penguin and Joker and Keaton was always like put in the background. No, that's fair. I want to see him in the Flash movie. I want to see what yeah. he gets to do as an older Batman. Yeah, no, I do too. I, I think that'll be fun. So, all right, let's move on to question seven. And question seven is now a staple of King Questions, and that is explain this Instagram post. So I go through. I find an Instagram post that speaks to me for my guest, and then I ask you to explain it. So here is <laughs> the Instagram post. <laughs> so, and I think it says, happy birthday. Is that to White? Uh, White Will Comics. White yeah, Will so, Comics. The man who yeah. had the more of an impact on my uh, collecting of comics as an adult than any other person. So I saw that, and I thought, well, that's interesting. This person had a huge impact on your collecting as an adult. So talk about that post. I mean, so that's Alec. Uh, sorry, that's Alec, and I. I uh, it, it was somewhere in the fall after I just started my YouTube channel. I'd been making little videos with my girls, and and nothing, nothing consistent. I was thinking of starting a Saturday show with my girls, and I think I'd done one episode, and then he messaged me out of the blue, and I'd never talked to him before, and he said, uh, "Hey, I want to do a, like a new comic book day show. I know you read new comics. I kind of like what you're doing. Do you want to do something?" So I I looked at his stuff. I had a ton of people tell me, and if Alec watches this, he's going to laugh. I had a ton of people tell me, like, you shouldn't partner with this guy. He's got, like, he's he's really quiet. He's really, like, subdued. He doesn't really, like, have a lot of personality. He's, you know, he he's, he's very sarcastic. He's hard to understand. You shouldn't partner with this guy. And I was like, this guy's perfect for me. Like, <laughs> we we are a yin and yang. We go together really, really well. And he's in, he is easily one of the most knowledgeable comic book people I know, period. Any era any publisher, any, any, any character. It's funny that you picked that because I'm wearing one of his shirts um, and he teases himself that he's the anti-joy equation. Uh, That's awesome. And, 
and that uh, and that he robs the joy from things. But the truth is, he's hypercritical, and I get that because I can be hypercritical as well. And so when we break down a comic, we get into the nitty gritty. We get into why does that one panel, why does this one panel not work? Why does that one decision that the artist made make all the difference, right? Um, and so I think his he went to art school. Uh, he's incredibly knowledgeable about the art of drawing comics. He even self-published his own comic book. Uh, one of his art teachers in school was David Mazzuccelli. David Mazzuccelli, who did Daredevil Born Again, he drew that comic. He drew uh, Batman Year One. He drew that comic. <laughs> so wow. David Mazzuccelli, a huge talent, and he's a college professor now. He taught my guy, uh, Whitewell Comics. And he's also a super nerd. The guy loves Disneyland. He's always, uh, he, he lives right near Disney World. He goes all the time. He, uh, he, he loves Dungeons and Dragons. He's been my dungeon master a ton. The guy just is full nerd. And I think uh, everything comes from a place of he wants the best out of the things he consumes. And when, when writers take the cheap, easy way out or when artists are lazy and you know not doing their best work, it drives him crazy. And yep. I, I appreciate that hypercritical eye because he just, he knows what he's talking about. And I think it's made a huge impact on me who is really at the beginning of this YouTube thing, just getting into indie comics, just understand. I, I'd read Vertigo a bunch, but I, most people wouldn't even count that as an indie comic because it's a DC label, thing, yeah. right? So for me, it was wonderful to have somebody uh, elevating my knowledge when I was learning these things. Cool. Love that man, and, I think oh, and then we met. Can. Yeah, and then we met. Yeah, I, I went to Baltimore Comic Con a couple of years back, and he allowed me to like crash in his hotel room, and then we hung out the whole time. And he's he is just as hilarious and amazing in person. And again, very dry, very funny, uh, but you you wouldn't know it. it you you see him, and you're like, he's a little standoffish. I don't know what's going on here. The guy is just the biggest heart and the funniest guy. I love him. That's awesome, man. I'm glad I picked that one because when I saw it, I was like, well, what, that, that that interests me. Like, why is he that big of an influence? And and that truly is what we were talking, you know, talking earlier, is the best thing about this whole YouTube journey, right? Is right. the people that we've met and the friends that we've made. And you know, I say it all the time. I I'm an old dude or an older guy, midlife guy that never dreamed that he can make a friend online. And I've made a ton of them. And right. it's uh, no, it's. I love that one. I'm, uh, that's an awesome tale. I'll definitely check this guy out. And uh, I mean, it, and I've been lucky to do. I mean, we for the first two years we did a show every week together. Now we're doing one every week plus another one every month, and occasionally hang out in between. He's just uh, he's had a bigger impact on me in this community than anybody, and I'm just super grateful. So I, I want to go to question eight here, and it's something you've mentioned a couple times, and you mentioned with your friend, and that's Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> And that is something that I literally know nothing about, like absolutely it's, nothing about. It, it seems to be binary for a lot of people. Either they yeah. are super into it or they've just stayed away from it. <laughs> well, my brother-in-law likes Dungeons and Dragons, and but I've never really had the chance to just sit down and ask him about it. And so I got you here and, you know, you're trapped for a few minutes inside <laughs> this screen. So kind of explain to me how Dungeons and Dragons works, like. So like a dungeon master, does he come up with the game itself? Like, I don't understand how it works. It, it, it The challenge with Dungeons and Dragons is it's so flexible. It's so wide open that it could go in a million different ways. But the basic premise was the opportunity to be role playing, to play some character inside of a game. So I'm not just simply, you know, I'm going to be James Bond and Goldeneye and play the video game. No, I'm going to be any character I want in the Bond universe or whatever universe we're playing in, mostly Dungeons and Dragons is fantasy universe. You want to play any character you want and you want to decide where you go and what you do. The The game doesn't have, it's not like a board game where you got to follow a specific track. It's a it's a tabletop game, meaning like the, there's a map of the universe maybe on the table, uh, but you can go wherever you want and do whatever your character chooses. The dungeon master usually understands the world understands the possibilities a lot of it and if they bought a like pre-packaged game then they know specifically every character in every room that you might walk into to try to talk to somebody and you've got all your friends and everybody's playing a different character you get to like you know you can be the completely smarmy uh guy you can be the the like 
sexy uh, woman who's you know got all the cool weapons. You can be like uh, Black Widow or whatever. Is that the character you play? Uh, I know it is. Currently, I am playing a woman uh, really? in, our, in our game right now. Uh, just because every time we've played with this group, everybody's been a guy, and I'm like, come on, we need a lady. Let's get a lady in here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I like it as a way to just be like somebody. I would ne- do the things I would never do. Be the guy, you know, I, I'm usually somebody who is morally ambiguous, kind of make some bad choices. I think it's fun to be able to just like portray that for a little bit. And I love doing voices and now accents and things. And the guys that I'm playing with on JP's channel, usually, I mean, Big Will Comics, Big Will is hilarious and does some of the best voices. The guy is, he doesn't have any shame at all. He goes all in. Um, so it's just a chance to just goof off with your friends and and play and just there's there's almost no rules like if you want to explore that house uh go for it you know you want to you want to go on a quest to fight the dragon go for it and the the dungeon master just kind of guides the game along and plays all the other characters that are not uh played by the the cast that's hanging out there Uh, so do can you win or lose you certainly could die um, yeah, and that would be the equivalent of losing. Yeah, um, but you can. There is no like end because the truth is you could finish your quest and then start a new quest with the same characters and continue on and continue to sort of level up. There's a maximum that you can level to, and I think it's twenty right now. Um, but once you're there, you can quest anywhere. You can just continue to journey, and it's much like uh, a lot of games, like World of Warcraft or whatever, right now, where there's these immersive worlds, and you're just leveling up your little guy as you go through the game. Um, the difference is you have this one person who's kind of guiding the game and and, and letting things happen, uh, hopefully, sort of naturally, the way the characters are progressing, but also letting them know, like you guys are way over your head now, like because we the first round that we played this crew. Uh, we thought we were we were badass. We were doing pretty well, and then we made one bad choice, and the whole group died. Everybody died. Oh, wow! And then he's wow. like, "Okay, well, that's the end of that game. <laughs> like, let's, <laughs> let's all make new characters and start over again next week." So, do you think a game like Dungeons and Dragons, because this is something I've been seeing a lot lately, like with the virtual reality, you know, the Oculus glasses and things sure. like that, could you see like Dungeons and Dragons translating to that, where you're actually in the world? I could totally see that. It, it, the challenge is, you know, that's what ultimately what I feel like World of Warcraft is. And I've played mm-hmm. that game for a few years uh, where you, you know, you pick your elf and you start off in the city and you, you're leveling up and you go out of the city for little quests and things. And it's a very immersive universe that they've created over there. And I think you could totally do that. It's just because D&D, you don't know where these characters are going to go at any given moment. <laughs> you need to plan out everything or at least have an understanding of what all the possible choices are because they go that's the the silliness of dnd is you just don't know what these knuckleheads are going to do they're going to they're you know you're going to give them the option to go and rescue this uh, princess and they're going to be like no let's go to the bar and get drunk and then everybody goes in the bar and then they get in a bar fight and then that leads to oh uh, now i've uh, upset the local uh, uh crime lord's son by beating him up in the bar now we're on the run, <laughs> you know, it, it leads the story in a different way. That's interesting. Yeah, no, I mean, like I said, my brother-in-law, uh, Amy's brother, loves it. And uh, my nephew loves it. Uh, it's just nothing. I never really got to ask him about it. You know, it just never really came up in the conversation. I just know they enjoy playing. I know one Christmas we bought uh, the nephew a bunch of D&D books. Like it was oh, nice. a bunch of different things. Yeah, so um i don't know yeah cool man uh, that, that was yeah i just uh, i didn't really know anything about it all right so question nine and it's something that you'd mentioned earlier as well with the contest with bueller um and it's music um mm. are you a big music person i mean I, I i certainly love music but i always joke that i was like musically scarred a little as a kid in mm-hmm. the sense that my parents forced me and my brothers to play instruments and i have no musical talent uh, and so I, if, if, if I'd had the remotest, um, like the smallest piece of musical talent, I could be a band. Cause I played the guitar, played the piano, played the saxophone, played the trumpet, played the recorder. Like I, I took lessons in all of these things and to this day cannot play a one of them. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> that experience as a kid being like forced to go to lessons and like just hating it really put me off music but i went i'm a a movie fiend so music 
movies were the, the avenue to get into music for me. So I'd watch a movie like Pulp Fiction and be like, wow, this music is incredible. What an amazing use of score. You know, uh, I, I, that that would definitely take me into to finding music in other avenues. And Guardians of the Galaxy is another great example of oh, seeing yeah. a movie and coming away with like, I need to hear all these songs. I need to check these things out. My wife is the bigger music fiend. And to your, just like your family, She's got a turn. She's got two turntables, actually. Uh, no microphone. Um, <laughs> I was in my head. I was like, two turntables and a microphone. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and she's got like, she's got cabinets full of vinyl and, and loves, you know, loves music in all different avenues. Specifically, she's an 80s girl. So Duran Duran and all these, sure. these 80s bands, definitely her jam. Um, so for me, it's always been more about like, connection to other media and then i'm an old i uh, mostly it's i think because of the era i grew up in the 80s and 90s i didn't like that music i didn't get into it like it was not my thing i liked 50s and 60s i like soul music I uh, sam sam cook sam cook yes classic rock you know i like the uh, rolling stones and my music, I, I could never go to find my people in a concert. I'm not going to pay $700 to see the Rolling Stones. And Sam Cooke is dead. So like right. I, most of the musicians that I loved weren't alive anymore. So I never really went to concerts. I've only been to a couple of concerts in my entire life. Uh, just really, net, my music is really only on recordings at this point. And that's the stuff. I, I, I'll, I'll set you know our Alexa to play uh, 50s soul music is what she plays in our house for me. I listen to James Brown radio. That's what I listen to. I love James Brown radio. It's the greatest thing ever. It's, but no, so good. But, but I like that though because it's because people consume comic books and and movies and music all in different ways. And right. like I'm a huge music head. Like I love music. Love it all from every genre, from every you know time frame. Like I love it all. That's what sure. my Addison does to my baby. She loves it. And, but she likes all, like she'll play music. One day she, we were in a car, she started playing Kiss. And I was like, how do you go Kiss? <laughs> and, you know, and she was like, well, I heard it on TikTok. So TikTok right. is a lot of that. But, um, but yeah, no, and that's, it's allowed us to bond. And I, and I thought, I like totally. though that you're watching a movie, Guardians of the Galaxy is a great example because that movie would not even be remotely the same without that soundtrack. Totally, totally. And, I, and, yeah. and, and there's a lot of filmmakers who have that skill. I think Cameron Crowe, who did Say Anything, and Jerry Maguire, you know, he married uh, Nancy Wilson from, uh, you know, Wilson, Phil Will no, um, Hart. She mm -hmm. was she was a member of Hart. And, and I think his movies have that same vibe where he just, he knows music so well that they, it just is infused with his for, his films and his storytelling. And I think that's always been my connection to music is like, there has to be a story to go with it for me to really get hooked on it. And then once I'm hooked, then it's like, okay, I'm going to go and find other albums by these people, you know? Yeah. Didn't he do almost famous camera? Yes. Pro? Yes. That's one of my favorite movies ever. It's so good. It's a masterpiece. Yeah. yeah, it really is. And I'm I mean, so like, glad I'm, he won I'm... the Oscar for that one. Cause he, he won it for screenwriting for that one and great movie. No, I, I made my, uh, or not made her, she was wanting to watch a movie, and I said, let's watch this one. I think you'll like this movie. <laughs> um, uh, asked, and now it's like a cult favorite for her. Like, she's made all her friends watch it. Um, <laughs> so you know, good. Fever Dog, like all those songs. So I mean, it just, I, I mean, you can't beat it, man. I love that movie. And I all love right, Philip, so, C Philip Seymour Hoffman as the music critic. I just love it, right? It's of course I'm so home good. and I'm awake, man. I'm not cool. <laughs> I'm not cool. Yeah. No, it's the great, just one of the greatest lines. I love so that. Good. Love, love, love that show or that movie. All right. So let's go to question 10. We're about at time here. And I haven't done this one in a while either, but I feel like I want to ask you this um, because I've enjoyed this so much and I want to maybe get into your world a little more and some of the people you hang with. So give me, give me some other channels, some people that I should potentially have on 10 questions like, Talk to me about some other channels that you really enjoy. And you're like, hey, Jimmy, you ought to bring them on 10 questions. I think you would dig them. I mean, I think the, the amazing thing, and I think you've hit it on the head several times this, this hour, is uh, how diverse and widespread our community is. And I'm always finding new pockets, new niches. I roll into somebody like Legions of Comics chat, and I'm seeing different people that I wouldn't see in Comic Tom's chat, or mm -hmm. you go to Bueller's chat. Uh, one of the guys that I'm spending the most amount of time with these days is JP budget collecting and JP's got 
a phenomenal channel where he's not only giving great speculation advice, but he's one of the few channels I know doing regular reading and discussions of indie comics. And that's something that is I'm a big fan of. So I love being able to jump in there and hear him talk about, you know, Usagi Yojimbo, which no who's doing videos talking about yeah. Usagi Yojimbo. Nobody is. But he's trying to do like a you know a monthly read of through the original stories from Usagi Yojimbo. So JP, you know, obviously I uh, I'm biased. He's my dungeon master right now. I gotta be good to him. Otherwise he's gonna kill me next week. Uh, but JP's been, he's the guy most recently having a huge impact on my collecting and on my uh, YouTube consumption. Uh, and obviously he's a huge help on comic gories as well. Um, so yeah, I, I think he's just an amazing guy as well. We, I mentioned Mark from Legion of Comics. I know mm -hmm. you know Mark and his yep. whole crew. Uh, those guys are amazing. And I've really been impressed with their knowledge on current comics, what's happening, and, and, the, and then the backstory. You know, you you ask Mark about Superman or the Hulk, he's going to give you the world. Like he he knows everything. That guy yes, is does. a phenomenal reader and has a huge knowledge base and just enthusiasm, right? I mean, just so infectious his enthusiasm for books. Every time I read a new issue of Superman, Son of Kal El, I'm like, I got to talk to Mark. I want to know what he thought of this moment or this thing because it was. A great book this week. Spoilers. Yeah, it was. A great book this week. Yeah. Um, now let's see who else am I hanging out and chats with. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, Justin, No Good Comics. Uh, I've been doing a show now for two years with Justin, and he does a ton of things. He's he does a similar show as Ten Questions, where he's you know he does it every Saturday. He's he's live stream interviewing comic collector origins. Like, how did you get into all of these? Yeah, things? I was just on it like maybe yeah three weeks ago or something like yeah. that. I love Justin. It's a great show as well, and I think another great way to get to know community members that are in, maybe in different circles than the one you travel in. Um, I think so. He and now he's into Legos, so he's going to start a Lego channel. I guess he's doing all Legos now, <laughs> and I think his channel is is one that's really just doing great things and offering a lot of value to to people looking to just find joy in all of this stuff. Uh, and then on uh, on the Instagram and YouTube or on the Instagram and TikTok side, I'm I've been hanging out with Albert Loves Comics a lot. Um, Albert is somebody else who's just there for the joy of this. He's not going to complain. Or you know, I know that I, I tend to like take shots at comics that I don't like or whatever. But he is he is always about the joy of reading, and he's he's like blowing up on the TikTok Instagram side. The guy is like hitting all the right buttons and. Albert really does come from, I want to read a good book. Like, give me a good story and I want to hear about it. Like, I just want to read something great. And he reads a ton of books. That's awesome, man. I'll definitely look into these guys because there's a couple there you said that I don't know. Um, and uh, that's that's what I'm kind of looking to do, too, is just kind of expand who I know in this. And because uh, everybody has a different point of view, like your answer to the music question. That's the first time I've ever gotten that, gotten that answer. And I loved it. <laughs> You know, and and that's but that's the best thing about doing a show like this. So yeah, and that's ten questions, brother. That is it. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you made it. You made it through. I know you've got a show to go do. Um, but I, I look, man, I had a blast. Um, this is awesome. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. This this was a good conversation. So I'm gonna link John down in the description below, of course. Um, go check out his YouTube channel if you're not already. Go check him out on Instagram. Um, all the the normal places. Uh, I don't think you'll be sorry. Uh, a lot of fun. I mean, I'm sorry that I had him on, but you know, it's you know, it is what it is. Everybody, you know, not everybody's perfect. Can't all be mistakes. winners. Can't yeah, all be they winners. can't all be winners. But yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> but no, I really appreciate it, John. Thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely, man. My pleasure. All right, guys. This has been Ten Questions. Mm -hmm.